Hey YouTubers, in today's video I want to discuss some easy ways to personalize and optimize your phone or tablet. Basically, go beyond the factory setup, make it your own, and make it look good at the same time. I'll briefly discuss some battery saving tips and some suggested apps as well. Uh, for today's model I'm using my beloved Samsung Galaxy Note 3, which I absolutely love. But this will work on pretty much any phone or tablet. I've been using this on different tablets and phones for years now. Um, but basically manufacturers ship their phones with different skins. Different manufacturers call them different things. But they're basically just overlays over the, over the Android experience. And they add some level of customization. Not much, but some bells and whistles. A little bit of functionality. And they all call it different things. Samsung calls it TouchWiz. HTC calls it Sense, I think Motorola still calls it Moto Blur, but they're all the same thing. Some people like them, some people don't like them. But the bottom line is you can go way, way, way beyond that by using your, over, your own launcher, uh, which you get from the Google Play Store. I've been using Nova Launcher, N-O-V-A Launcher, for years, and in my opinion, it's by far the best launcher. It is the most stable, it's constantly updated, and it's not expensive. It's only four ninety nine, and that's per account. So if you had a, a phone and a tablet under your same Google account, you pay four ninety nine once, and you can install it on both devices. So for me, it's a no brainer. It's well worth it. Um, it's non destructive. So once you install it, you can always go back to TouchWiz at any time. It wouldn't even disrupt your previous settings. So definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, briefly go into some of the things you can do with it, what it, how it allows you to customize your phone. But I mean, I could do a separate video just on Nova Launcher. I might end up doing one uh, anyway after this, if if enough people want to know more about it. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to go into is the home screen. Um, you know, everyone uses their phone differently. I consider myself to be a power user. I use it for everything. Some people don't. Some people are basic. Some people are more eye candy than performance. Me, I'm probably, I would say I'm probably, you know, 60% performance, 40% eye candy, maybe. I do put a lot of weight on performance. A laggy, you know, non-responding phone, to me, it's not worth looking good if it doesn't perform. So wherever you fall into the category, you can just, you know, configure, configure your phone, you know, weighted towards that end of the spectrum. But either way, Nova Launcher allows you to do that. Uh, Nova and all the other apps that I'm going to be mentioning are available on the Play Store. So if you want to download, try them. Uh, that, that's where I got mine. Uh, I want to go straight into the home screen, which you're looking at mine. And I really believe that the home screen should house like 90% of what you do on your phone. It's the main screen you go to when you hit the home button. Or in my case, I've added a gesture, Another one of the things Nova allows you to do. No matter what screen I'm on, if I just double tap the screen, I go back to the home screen. Um, also, if I swipe up on the screen, it'll give me another function. Go into S Voice, or in this case, I can go into S Voice or close all running apps. I can go into my task manager. You know, basically a bunch of different things with one gesture or swipe up. There are other ways to get there, but Nova makes it simple. It allows you to add gestures, change icons. It gives you this very cool scrolling dock on the bottom where you can control how many icons you want on there. Um, they also offer, Nova also offers this swipe up feature. So for instance, the camera, if I just press the camera, it would function like a regular camera button. But if I swiped up on the very same icon, it would perform a different task. In this case, I set it to open a different app for my Panasonic camera, but you can set it for a bunch of different things. You can set it to open a shortcut, you can set it to uh, use one of Nova's default actions. The point being, you get two functions in one icon. So it saves you space and it gives you better performance. You can do that with any of them on the dock or on the screen. Uh, I take advantage of that. I try to keep the swipe up action in the same uh, logical subject matter as the icon, like my camera. Or let's say you had a navigation icon, you might configure the swipe up to then open Google Maps or something related. It just allows you to remember what the swipe up is. But once you configure the phone, you kind of remember where everything is. It becomes second nature and it's so much more usable. The widget that I have here 
is called One Weather. It basically comes with just a clock, you know, little clouds there, temperature, so on, precipitation, wind, all that jazz. If I click on the time, it goes into my alarms, stopwatch, all that settings. I can update it, refresh it with this little arrows right here. And the thing I like about it is it's very clean. It comes with all that and it gives you this search bar on top. It says search Google, so I could do a type search. I could do a voice search. Um, the other beauty of Nova is when you have a widget like this, there's actually a box, an imaginary box. And this screen is clear, it's transparent, the widget, so you can see behind it, so you can see my graphic. You know, if you're someone that has a picture of a pet or a child, you, know, you probably want to see more of the picture. You don't want it to be cluttered like this and you can't see behind it, especially for your home screen. So I like the fact that it's very clean looking. But there is an imaginary box around here where normally if you want to take an icon or an app in this case and drag it somewhere, even if it appeared empty, you wouldn't be able to because there's that imaginary box and it would actually fight for the space and it would bump your widget out of the way and it's very frustrating. But Nova has a feature called overlapping widgets, which is great because on my widget, there are some areas up here that were, were empty. They were void of anything, so I found a use for them. I put a little flashlight right here, so I can just turn it on and off right there. This little microphone right here is a voice recorder. If I want to make a quick note to myself, I tap it. I record a voice comment. Here I have a to-do slash shopping list. So I utilize the areas around the widget, and it's still pretty clean, but very, very usable. A lot of things going on. So basically on this whole screen, I have all everything I need. I got texting uh, via Chomp, my email application, which is K9, uh, my internet browser, I use Boat Browser. I have a custom icon for my apps. This would be your apps button. If I touch it, it goes right into my apps, widgets, all that stuff, everything you would get when you touch the apps button. If I swipe up on it, I've configured it to go into the settings of the phone. Right now I'm running Lollipop which is Android 5.0, which I just recently got the update for, but this thing runs on I don't know, probably everything back to Ice Cream Sandwich, uh, and maybe even before that. So it runs on a variety of devices. I also have my, my phone here. People have, a lot of times they have a contact uh, icon and the phone. You don't need to do that. Once you go into the phone, you're gonna see that you have, I uninstalled that for the time being, but you would see in the actual phone application on a top tab, it says contacts. So you can actually go in there. You don't need a separate icon here for contacts so you can save another space. So I just kind of, you know, I try to be frugal with what's on this main screen at least for things I use. Smart, tool, smart tools is like, it's one of those all-in-one Swiss army knife things, has everything from flashlights to mirrors to magnifying glasses. I mean everything, unit conversion, it's you know one-stop shopping utility belt basically. And then the things that everyone else has, gallery, calendar, calculator, you know, the things that I would use on a daily basis are all here on my main home screen. I've been down the path of, you know, let me have nine different home screens with this, that on the other one, and you can do that in Nova, but I found out that that's not really usable. You're constantly searching for something somewhere, and now I just basically keep it in my main home screen, usually one to the left and then one to the right. So three total, and that pretty much has everything I need. So it's not too crazy. I mentioned before how you can install Nova, and if you didn't like it, it wouldn't destroy anything you've done to the phone. You don't have to root your phone. Um, it, it doesn't destroy anything, even how it's been set up. If you've been using your TouchWiz for a year and you have it set up one way and you want to try this, there's no problem. If, once you go into the settings, it's going to, mine, since I'm using Nova by default, it's, it's where it's going to go. It doesn't go into the TouchWiz. It says, select default home, says Nova Launcher. But if I touch that, it's going to give me the options to go back to TouchWiz or, or something else. So if I wanted to, I could go back to TouchWiz in you know basically a press of a button i'm not going to and i don't think i ever would see now it says not set so i didn't have to go in and say use nova launcher i'm going to say always in this case and then it says oh you can clear the defaults yada 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 and bingo i'm back into nova if you selected touch Wiz, it would boot back into touch Wiz. if you selected always it would always go back into touch Wiz, and it wouldn't boot nova anymore you can always set it and then take it off however you want to do it 
if you feel a little sketchy about trying it, but it doesn't ruin anything, so there's really no downside. I think you'll love it. It adds, I mean, so many features, transitions, folders, the, the dock I mentioned, widgets, unread counts on your icons. So, you know, you want to see how many, you know, unread messages you may have somewhere or something. Uh, tons of transitions. I'm using a simple one here, but there's all kinds of bells and whistles that it adds. There's a, the dock down here is, you can make it transparent. There's color variations. I mean, every option under the sun. But it works, works really well. They update it all the time. This was updated months and months ago for Lollipop. I just got Lollipop right now, which is 5.0. I mean, they're on top of everything. They're always adding new features. I, you know, all launches are not created equal. I've tried, got to be six different launches. This is by far and away the best. So I feel very comfortable suggesting this. I've set it up on different people's phones and tablets of all makes, and it runs fantastically. Um, some battery tips I just wanted to basically share with everybody. A lot of this stuff is not new, but you'll be surprised. Um, you know, when you swipe down your notifications, it'll show you five up top at one shot. You want to keep this populated with the five you're most likely to use. In my case, I have location, hands-free for call mode, mobile data, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Just keep track of what's on. You'd be surprised how many people have everything on running all the time and they're not using any of them. Kill on your battery. You can go ahead and change that. You can go into the settings. You can, I, I think you can even swipe down with two fingers and open up all of them and then you can reorder them and select which ones you want in your top five. You know, you could do that, you know, regular customizing of that. But keep an eye on those five because a lot of times that's a battery drain in itself. Live wallpaper, although it looks great, and I, when I first got the phone, I loved it. It was awesome. Battery drain, really unnecessary. Uh, again, if you're someone that's into eye candy, then pimp out your phone. I mean, do, do whatever you want. Just realize you're going to take a hit for it. But it's all about making the phone your own, making it look different, making it work for you. You'll notice my icons are different. I, I downloaded an icon pack. In Nova, you can also change the icons. If I long press it and go into edit, I can rename it, change the icon, create a swipe up action. In this case, my swipe up is Flipboard. And you can do that for every icon that you have doc or on the screen. Uh, some other battery tips. Brightness. You shouldn't need to keep the brightness up that high. I mean, depending on your phone. On my phone, I keep it probably 40 to 45% and it's plenty bright. So that will help for sure. Also, background apps, keep them to a minimum. Widgets, if you have a lot of widgets, that will eat up battery as well. I'm not saying don't put any widgets on. I have a widget or two here and there, but I'm not excessive with it. If you have a lot, it will contribute to eating your battery. So you just got to keep all these things in mind. You know, if you have a lot of background things running, you know, that could also do it. You don't even realize that you're not even using the application. It's running in the background. There's an application called, I'll go into my suggested apps real quick. It's called um, One Touch or All-in-One Toolbox. Very simple, you download it, launch it, you press the clean button, it runs through this clean cycle, and then you exit it and it frees up memory and it helps keep running apps to a minimum. There's a section in there where you can actually shut off some apps that you don't want running all the time. They'll still work, they're still available at, 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 when you need them, but they won't be running in the background. Some other suggested apps, over the stock, you know, Android apps are the ones that comes with your with your phone. Like I said, Canine Mail is my preferred email. Way better than the stock. I use Boat Browser for my internet browser. Out of Milk for my shopping list. Uh, Nova Launcher, obviously. Uh, this different calculators. Chomp SMS I use for my texting. There are other ones that are good too, but I found that to be the best. All these smart tools that kind of all in one utility belt of things. Love that. And just a bunch of things. Plex, if you're into like streaming media from a home server or something, Plex is great. You can see your uh, music, movies, pictures on here with like a Netflix interface. Very, very nice stuff. So there are a lot of applications that I prefer over the stock. And email, texting, internet browser, those are three of the biggies. And I, I definitely suggest those three, Chomp, K9. Type mail is also good for email. 
ES File Explorer is probably the best file explorer. I mean, to each his own, but give them a shot. I've been using those for a long time. I haven't changed them. I've tried others, and they seem to work great for me, and hopefully they'll work great for you. If you're using the stock stuff, I think you'll definitely notice a big improvement uh, on those. I want, I want to cut this video, sh well, I would like to say short, but it's not too short. Uh, anyway, at this point, and um, just say I hope the video was helpful in some way. Maybe it gives you some ideas. Uh, I don't expect you to know everything about Nova Launcher based on this. I just basically touched on it. Uh, if there's enough you know, interest, I will definitely do a video on Nova itself, You know, go into all the settings and kind of describe what they do so you get a better idea. I mean, you can you see how many icons I have on the screen. You can control how many across, how many down. You know, my phone is a, kind of a large phone, so I can fit a lot. Maybe yours is smaller, like an S4. You wouldn't put as many, but you have total control of all that stuff. And that's the whole idea. This gives you total control over your phone. You can get as crazy or as basic as you want, but either way, it runs beautifully. I have, um, if, to get into my S voice, I just double click on my uh, home button. It, gets, it goes in there. I mean, this main home screen, I can live with it by itself and not miss a beat. I think that's the whole idea of the home screen, no matter how you have it set. You should basically try to configure it like that, and then everything else, you know, is preference what you want to do. I put a lot of stuff on here just for the video, but basically I keep games on one screen, this on the other, and some utilities and temporary stuff on this screen, and that's it. Uh, so I hope it was helpful. If you guys have any questions, comments, you want to see something else, maybe you have a suggested app that you know for me to try. I'm always into you know trying something else. That's how I find out what works best for me. Um, definitely leave a comment and. I hope you enjoyed this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you know someone this may be useful, you think may be useful for, um, you know, share the video. And uh, I'm, I'm sure someone somewhere will pick up a tip from it or something. The, the other thing I want to show, last before I almost forgot, I set up one of these bars, like this is for my, all my remotes, my Roku, right? So I kind of themed the bars. But this thing, Dock and Drive, I kind of set this whole bar with car apps. I downloaded this thing called Dock and Drive, which is pretty cool. My GPS is off, of course. But what it does is it gives you, and it's horizontal or vertical, it shows you miles per hour with the compass around. Uh, you can touch this, and it becomes bigger. You can long press it. It changes to a clock. A um, whole bunch of different things that you could do, you could do with this. And you just you close it right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna launch it again. I of course hit the Google thing. Anyway, so I launch it again. I'm not gonna put my GPS right now. But you can also put shortcuts on here. So I put like this speed camera shortcut. Uh, it, it'll identify some speed cameras in the area, red light cameras, things like that. Basically everything uh, having to do with you know the car, things in the car. My navigation program. Let's say you have. A, uh, you want to put somebody on speed dial, your home, I have some texting th thing here, this, this um, daily roads thing, I think it's called Voyager, you can use it as a dash cam, so basically I configured this whole thing in this one app to ride with me in the car, and I have all my car things associated with it, I found this to be very helpful, it's called dock and drive, uh, the speed camera thing is, is also pretty good. I, I can't say it's 100% accurate, but works pretty well. So the whole idea though is configured for what I need it. When I'm in the car, I open that one thing, it turns my Bluetooth on, my Wi-Fi off, and I'm set up to go. I put it in my car mount, and I'm good to go. So anyway, uh, drop me a comment. Let me know if you like the video, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.